In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on computing the effective annual rate of return, this time with continuous compounding. And when we say continuous compounding, we're going to assume an infinite number of compounding periods during the year. If this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. Okay, so this is the question which I want us to have a go at. 20,000 is invested in an account with a stated annual interest rate of 10%. What is the value of the investment after two years of growth with continuous compounding? And what is the investment's EAR? And this is, this is a question that in terms of the top section, you will have seen in a previous video where we were assuming quarterly compounding instead of continuous which is the case right now so with continuous compounding you can either learn the relevant formula or you can apply a um well, you can cheat a little bit and make life easier for yourselves if you don't necessarily want to learn that whole formula so let me show you the official formula uh, first of all the value after a certain number of periods so fv n where n is going to be the number of years with continuous compounding being assumed, that's going to equal whatever the PV, so the investment is in this case 20,000. Now, times the number E raised to the power of R um, S. I'm going to make sure that we understand that this is the stated annual rate. Previously, I just called this R. Okay, the rate of investment, obviously that's going to be the 10% from the question over here but multiplied by n. So that's also the number of years. Now, this may not be the most intuitive thing for you. Um, so I, I completely appreciate that not everybody will want to necessarily learn this formula. Um, but there is a shortcut which I'm going to show you or a, a bit of a roundabout solution which you can apply if you want to. Let's use the numbers from the uh, question to um, populate this formula. So we're going to get PV, that's 20,000, multiplied by E to the power of RS. Well, R is 10%. Um, so 0 0.1 times number of years, that's two years, isn't it? Value after two years. So this is effectively going to give us 0 0.2. Now, how do you work with this on the calculator? What I um, suggest you do is um, use a certain logic, which I'm going to show you. So let's get the calculators out. In order to properly get this term, so e raised to a certain power, what I suggest you do is you type in the power, so that's 0 0.2, followed by second, and then the ln key, which is the natural logarithm key, ln. Okay, so second ln, and as the secondary function of that key, you see e to the power of x. So what you've effectively done right now is raised e to this power, and that's the answer 1.22. And we don't now just need to multiply the result by whatever is sitting here. So that's our 20,000. And this should give the correct answer. So times 20,000. Brilliant. 24,428. Okay, good. You may not remember this formula in the exam, and that's absolutely fine. So as a roundabout way, which is going to be a, an absolutely fine approximation, what I suggest you may do, so that's an or, assume something like daily compounding. So compounding 365 times per year. And you should remember from the previous video when, where we had quarterly compounding and the M term was equal to 4, that the relevant formula here would be FV after two years would be basically 20,000, that's the PV, times 1 plus the relevant stated annual rate, 0 0.1, if it was 365 times per year, divided by 365 times this multiplied by 2, the number of years, because we had m times n in the previous video. So 365 times 2, effectively. 
in the power. Okay, let's see what this would be. Let's do the brackets first and then multiply by 20,000. So 0 0.1 divided by 365 plus 1 raised to the power, so y to the power of x, open bracket, 365 times 2, close bracket, 730 equals, and now multiply this by 20,000. The result's going to be very, very close. Yeah, it's 24,427. So the result here is almost the same. And you would have to have a very, very close call in between the answers to really distinguish between this approximation and what it really is, assuming annual compounding. So just a suggestion, if you don't remember the formula for, uh, for continuous compounding and computing the fair value, um, using that assumption, why not? use an approximation many people actually do because they find it easier they don't have to learn something new now for the EAR component of the question what's the effective annual rate here um, the relevant thing to do is simply to take this component E to the power of RS but without the multiplying by 2 we don't need the N which is simply scaling it up to uh, more than one year minus 1, and that's going to be the result. So once again, in the same way as before, I'm going to first type in the annual stated rate, 0 0.1, that's my RS. Now, second, followed by LN, which has e to the power of x as its secondary function, minus 1. Okay, the answer seems to be 10.517. So, 10.52%. And if you check this against the possible answers to this question, it seems to coincide very nicely with answer B.